The early game of Three Houses is easily the toughest part of any given run. Units haven't had time to get good abilities, resources and weapons are scarce, and enemy stats are brutally high. As such, units with strong early game potential, like Felix and Dimitri, are highly valued by the community. But today, I want to make the case for an extremely underrated early game unit, one with the potential to excel for the entire game. Ignatz. So how exactly does a unit with 8 base strength make for a good early game heavy hitter? With two things. First, his personal ability, Watchful Eye, which grants hit plus 20, and second, the Devil Axe. The Devil Axe has 18 base might, which is obscenely strong compared to any other weapon you have access to in Chapter 2. Its only downside is the fact that it can't be repaired without the extremely rare Agarthium, but that's the thing. You only need it for the first few chapters when you have extremely few strong offensive units. Let's take a look at the Devil Axe's place in the Golden Deer's early game. This chart compares the Devil Axe's normal attack damage output to the gold standard of early game damage, a Steel Lance using Tempest Lance. Ignatz loses out by a mere 2 damage to even the strongest units you'll have available, and when it comes to his hit rate, the chart looks something like this. So Ignatz barely misses out on equaling your most reliable damage dealers without even using combat arts, but he has a trick up his sleeve. Every unit in 3 houses learns Smash at D axes, which grants 3 might, 20 hit, and 20 crit. Let's take a look at those damage tables from before, but this time, let's have Ignatz use Smash. With combat arts, Ignatz is the strongest unit you'll have access to at base level in terms of raw damage, and when comparing his hit rate, it looks even better. The additional 15 accuracy on Ignatz's attacks is excellent in the early game, and if you keep an Iron Axe or a Training Axe in his inventory, he can reliably finish off weakened enemies with pinpoint accuracy and good damage as well. But why go to all this trouble when you could simply have Ignatz get Tempest Lance himself? It's only a D-ranked combat art, same as Smash. Well, the reason is simple. You can only purchase up to three Steel Lances in Chapter 2. The Devil Axe lets you bring an additional physical heavy hitter to any fight, which is a godsend in Maddening's early game. The second reason to trade an axe over Lance, however, requires a bit more analysis. Ignat starts with 8 luck and 7 dex, and has a 55% luck growth paired with a 50% dex growth. These stats taken together mean that he is one of the most accurate characters in the game, with an extremely high innate critical rate to boot. So, turning him into a crit machine is probably what's meant to balance out his low strength growth, right? Well, kind of no. Intelligent Systems, in their infinite wisdom, decided to give Ignatz zero crit boosting personal combat arts. All of his sword and bow arts are utility moves. All of them, except for one, Smash. Smash's mind-boggling 20% crit rate boost is as strong as many endgame combat arts and enables him to put his excellent crit ability to use. As a side note, it would be remiss of me not to mention Hunter's Volley here. With its 10 crit boost and brave doubling effect, it is a top tier combat art for crit builds, but the ability is locked to the sniper class, which puts it behind a level 20 barrier, and as such, it only starts cropping up in a much later part of the game than Smash. In the difficult chapters of the early game, Smash is there, and Hunter's Volley is not. It may be objectively inferior in terms of damage output after you get Hunter's Volley, but before then, there is no competition. So that's why you train Axe on Ignatz. If you want a crit machine as fast as possible, and you need his power for the early game, it has no real competition. But what other skills should you train on him? The easy answer is Brawl. Because he's a male unit, he'll have easy access to the War Master class for that delicious crit plus 20, and with a Flying Bane, he's going to have a harder time getting into Wyvern classes than other students, though it's still possible with some effort. Despite this, War Master is the pick we'll be going with for this video, and to that end, you should focus on training his Axe skill for the entire game, switching between Authority and Brawl as necessary until you hit C plus Brawling or whatever his minimum is for making it into the class. Thanks to his extreme luck growth rate and good bases, you can often get away with as low as C brawling if you've got at least 20 luck on him. You can always save scum low probability exams at the start of each month to avoid wasting time on skills you won't be using. So with all this in mind, here's what Ignatz's progression should look like. 
set his initial goal to axe, and spam train him until he hits D axe as early as possible. Usually, setting a single skill is a waste of XP, since you'll be only earning three quarters of the teaching experience you'd be getting compared to teaching two skills at once. But in this case, the early game is so brutal that you absolutely need to be able to equip and use the Devil Axe by Chapter 2. And with a single training session, combined with two standard end-of-week training growths, Ignatz will reach the D-rank required. Once you've hit D-Axe, switch over to Axe and Brawl until you hit C-Brawl, at which point you can switch over to Axe and Authority for the rest of the game. As for his classes, you'll start in Commoner, then go Fighter, then Master Brigand for Deathblow, Master Archer for hit plus 20, go into Warrior at level 20, and finally settle into War Master. As for Battalions, any of them will do, but just like everyone else in the game, Ignatz really wants Geralt's mercenaries. However, he can make do without a battalion early on, or just take whatever's lying around with decent physical damage. Thanks to his 35% strength growth, every bit of power you can add will make him more lethal, though in the early game, most of his power will be coming from his equipment rather than his stats. As you get further and further into the game, he'll want to transition away from raw power on the Devil Axe to your highest crit rate battalions. In Chapter 10 of Golden Deer, if you've recruited Cyril, you can get the Goneril Valkyries from Dividing the World, which give a monstrous 8 might, 20 hit, and 15 crit at the same B authority as the similarly available Alliance Master Archers. Also available slightly earlier in Chapter 8 are the Lester Mercenaries, boasting 7 might, 20 hit, and 15 crit for the same B authority, which Ignatz should have no problem reaching thanks to his authority boon. In terms of his equipment, the key to turning Ignatz into a death machine early on is obviously the Devil Axe. It's available as early as Chapter 2, when you unlock the Abyss area after beating Chapter 1 of the Sindered Shadows DLC. You can pay 500 renown to inspire worship and open the Pagan Altar, and then drop 600 renown on a Devil Axe. The axe has 18 base might, which is mind-boggling for a weapon you can get so early. However, its biggest downside is obviously its 60 base hit, which Ignatz is set up perfectly to mitigate with his personal ability. As you advance in Professor rank, you'll be able to purchase the Killer Axe and upgrade it to the Killer Axe Plus, which Ignatz will want to equip as his Devil Axe runs out of durability and he transitions into a critical hit-centric build. Ignatz makes good use of crit and accuracy rings, though again, because of his personal ability and his natural crit happiness, he makes far better use of the crit ring than most other units who would prefer the added hit chance. And at long last, let's see what our final Ignatz build looks like. For abilities, he'll have Axe Fair, Fist Fair, and Crit Plus 10 from War Master, Watchful Eye, his personal, Death Blow, Hit Plus 20, Axe Fair, Axe Crit Plus 10, and Axe Prowess from his Class Masteries and Axe Ranks, and for equipment, he'll have the Goneril Valkyries, Alliance Master Archers, or Leicester Mercenaries Battalion, a Critical Ring, and a Killer Axe Plus. This setup will grant Ignatz massive hit and crit potential, enough to keep his damage relevant against even the most evasive enemies in the game. On the surface, Ignatz looks kind of like a crappy unit, with bad strength growth and combat arts geared for utility in a game that really demands high damage output to keep up with inflated enemy stats. But thanks to a few unique traits and a truly excellent personal ability, Ignatz is a great damage dealer, with the ability to become a unique frontline combatant unit with an invaluable niche in the early game. Well, thanks for watching! If you liked the video, drop a comment, like, and subscribe. If you're looking for more videos like this one, check out my Hanuman video here, or my Caspar one here. Either way, have a good one.